Hello, so back at it again with another video. I'm gonna go over in today's video about ears and hearing and how the sound effects make changes in your body and how it can distort. Like, um, yeah, so I'm gonna dive into the hearing and whatnot and we'll look at my notes. Okay, so this is the, the definitions of the auditory tube and I'm gonna go over here to look at certain images of the ear. You got the co cochlear ear, where it's, uh, it's a branch of the ear and the external medius meets up with the cochula. Okay, and then you have all these parts that make up the inner ear. And I'll explain this as best as I can right here. This is a diagram of the inner ear. Okay, so you had an external acoustic medius, which goes to the malus, and then into the incus, and then goes into the stapes, which does a vibrating sound into the oval window. This oval window transmits sound to the vestibulocular nerve, and that's when you come into this slide over here, and this creates a sound when these are contracted or reach the vibrations that then sends all the impulses down and the hairs pick it up through the, um, tr the another membrane called the sectorial membrane. So these hairs pick it up and you have supporting cell sensory fibers along here, the basilar membrane, outer hair. Okay, and so then this one right here is a, um, a section as well of the cochlear duct, like these ducts make up the ear as well, but when it goes into the vestibular uh, membrane, it makes sound, it goes into different frequencies, and when you have stronger frequencies, higher pitch, it reaches further into the ending of the ear right here, and you can look at it, it's called the helicopterima, and you have this membrane labyrinth, which is also like the same thing as a tectorial membrane, but it squeezes together and sends impulses back out through the vestibular membrane. And this is also known as the scala type penny, where it exits. And that um, extends from the apex of the cochlea to the round window and contains perilymph. So then you have an actual microscope diagram right here. And uh, this is the cochlear duct. This is the scaly tympani, basilar membranes, hair cells, and the tectorial membrane. So this is a, a good book, good reference. Um, Holes is a book I use to study. It's the book the school recommends as well. But this is all good information here. Studying the diagrams, looking it over, labeling as you label it next to it what it's called, and this is obviously the cochula, this whole piece right here. Um, yeah, and then I'm gonna go into some of the pictures over here as well, so it makes more sense as well in the actual book. So you had a cavity, the tympanic cavity, and you have the oval window and the stapes right here that leads all that vibrations, that signal the muscles to contract. And you have a facial nerve here, and you have a vestibular nerve so the cranial, so you got the cochlear nerve, which extends from right here, extends in the vestibular cochlear nerve right here. So you have the cochlear and vestibular cochlear, but both are, are ornated as well because it, um, vestibular cochlear nerve, actually it allows for like stability and equilibrium within like, if you had a flash bang and like a grenade, you would you would lose some of your motor functions, and that's why you the hearing is very important because it disrupts that and leads to impair impairments in your brain and functioning because it doesn't travel up to the brain as well to actually make the movements it needs. So this is just a little bit about the ears. Um, in tomorrow's video or the next day's video, I don't know when I'm gonna record these because these are day by day videos, but um, I'll go over more and like the processes of like eyes, that's what I'm thinking. So, signing out. Thank you.